Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Park with your Functional Health Minute for today. Today, I'd like to go over one of the tests that I use here at Arizona Wellness Medicine. It is an advanced functional medicine test. The name of the test is called an organic acids test. And what it is, is it is a it uses a urine sample to get a bunch of metabolite data. Um, and I'm going to kind of pull up a sample report and go over the different categories of information that we gain from doing this particular test. And at future functional health minutes, there'll be other testing modalities that I'll go over as well. Um, so this uh, is from Great Plains. That's the name of the laboratory company. And again, it's called an organic acid test. Um, and I do get um, a large number of, of uh, metabolites on this report, over 70 metabolites to be exact. So um, I'm going to kind of start from the very top um, and kind of go over the different categories. So um, the first, you know, nine markers on this test are for yeast and fungal overgrowth. And, um, and this, the company is actually very good about separating the two. And um, I know it's backwards on the view, but what you can see is there, you know, there are some, uh, there's some writing in red here for, you know, something called aspergillus, um, which is a type of a mold. And that one can actually be found in foods as well as, you know, being exposed um, from a, like a water damage building. So, um, and the other markers are for, you know, actual yeast overgrowth. And the most um, common marker that is high when there's a yeast overgrowth problem is one called arabinose. Um, and so the first, you know, set of markers here are, you know, assessing for, you know, basically yeast and fungal mold overgrowth. Um, the next set of markers is looking at, you know, things for bacterial overgrowth and they're just general markers and some of the markers are going to tell us about um, you know healthy gut bacteria as well um, and then the set of bottom markers is actually for something called um, clostridia so clostridia is a type of bacteria that is normally found in the gut but can be overgrown and everyone thinks when you say clostridia a lot of people will go to something called c diff which is clostridium difficile which is a um, can be a type of um, infection, it can actually cause something called pseudomembranous colitis, but there are other strains of clostridia that can cause significant symptoms on a more kind of chronic basis. If you did get an acute case of C. diff, you would certainly know it. You would have very difficult to treat um, diarrhea, pain, and even sometimes bleeding, um, you know, with, with the loose stools, and you can get dehydrated, and it is very hard, um, can become very hard to treat. Um, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm actually talking about other strains of clostridia, or you can actually have even a, a, a lower level kind of overgrowth of, of C. diff itself that isn't quite so um, serious. So the, the set of markers on the bottom looks at bacterial markers for clostridia, too. Um, and then the next set of markers, you know, starts to look at some other things um, related to what are called the mitochondria. So the mitochondria are the powerhouses, the cells, the energy producers, right? Um, that is, the mitochondria are part of how, you know, we make ATP or produce energy. So I get a huge set of markers um, related to the mitochondria on this test. Um, I also get a set of markers for something called oxalates. Now, oxalates are in healthy foods. It's not that they're bad, but um, two problems can happen. One, you can be genetically set up to overabsorb oxalates, which can create symptoms, or you can, you know, have some nutrient deficiencies um, that will uh, increase your, you know, risk of absorbing overabsorbing oxalates from foods. And honestly, you can also just be eating a very high oxalate diet and not even know it. So two areas where symptoms show up with high oxalates tend to be in the realm of pain in some way, shape, or form. Um, and it can be various different types of pain. And then it can also cause GI symptoms, more commonly diarrhea um, and, you know, and abdominal pain than going the other way. It usually doesn't you know, contribute to constipation, but I, I do see more diarrhea in my high oxalate patients. Um, and then the marker, the set of markers at the bottom are what are called neurotransmitter metabolites. So neurotransmitters are brain chemistries. Um, so these are things like looking at um, serotonin, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine. Um, so I do get a little bit of information on that. And, you know, there is a huge gut-brain connection. And so um, a lot of times, especially when there's an overgrowth of clostridia, um, I can actually see uh, disturbances in some of the neurotransmitters, particularly the dopamine metabolites. So um, that's kind of, you know, one example of how what's going on in the gut can affect the brain and behavior. 
Um, and then there's some other cool markers on here um, that are, there's one in particular that I love, um, the quinolinic marker um, does tell me if there's any kind of like neuro excitatory, you know, inflammatory process going on um, in the brain. And, and so it's a really good marker for that. Um, so, and then uh, next is looking at a huge, I had a huge panel of two things. One, nutrient metabolites. So I get a lot of um, the B vitamins. Um, so I get to see not only what levels are in blood when we check in blood work, but this kind of tells me like how, how is your body doing utilizing it? Um, so, and I also get other markers like vitamin C and CoQ10 and um, N-acetylcysteine. There's markers for glutathione in there. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of nutrient metabolite markers that are valuable information for me. Um, and then we also get a set of um, amino acid metabolites, and we also get something called phosphoric, which you know can tell me um, about someone's nutritional status, and also it is uh, related to vitamin D status as well. So this organic acids test gives me a lot of information in one test, and it's a first morning urine before you take any of your supplements, and there is a couple of days of prep time um, of, of things to consider. There's a few dietary considerations and some supplements you'll come off before doing the test. But generally, um, you know, those, those are, the, those are the, the answers that I get, the results that I get. So I do the organic acids test when I think there may be a yeast overgrowth problem that's not showing up other way, you know, in any other test, like a stool study. I, I will look to see if there's, um, I'll also do it if I suspect that there's you know, disturbances in neurotransmitters, like you know, brain chemistries. Um, I'll also do it to look at the mitochondrial function um, and nutrient function. And so those are kind of like the main categories of reasons why um, I will you know, choose to do an organic acid. This is Dr. Emily Park with your functional medicine.